في كتير طرق وسط الحياة تاهو فيها ناس وطرق تبان مفروشة وارد وتنتهي بألم ودي لكن الطريق للفرحة وطريق الخلاص عند المسيح أصل المسيح Hello, I'm Dr. Cynthia, and welcome to a live edition of Woman Who Makes a Difference. Marhaba. Today, we are going to be doing the episode in English pretty much entirely. My co-host, Randa, whom you may remember from previous episodes and from live a few nights ago, couldn't be here with us today. But I do have a special guest, Nurse Ethna. It's my honor and privilege to be here tonight to be with you and to speak with you and tell you our story. Tonight, we're going to talk about making a difference outside of your home. And it's true, our show is called Woman Who Makes a Difference, but do you know what? We believe that every person can make a difference. So if you're a man watching this, please stay tuned in because you can make a difference too. In the show that we recorded and showed three to four years ago, we covered various topics about making a difference. And those were ways to make a difference inside your life, inside your heart, for example, with issues that we might have with self-esteem, with anger, with problems that uh, hurts and bitterness that we may have had. We discussed issues that occur between people, such as conflicts and how to work those out. And we discussed making a difference in your family, whether it's your marriage or with your children. And we invite you to watch those episodes if you've never seen them. They are posted online on The Way TV. Look up atvsat.com under programs and you can find them. So tonight, and in our live episodes, we don't repeat what we spoke about, but we include new material, things that might have come up in the last few years since we taped new ideas of how we can apply the principles we learned to specific things in our lives. And a few nights ago, we covered some things that had to do with making a difference inside ourselves some new insights Randa and I had on anger and conflicts and family and balance. Tonight, we're going to talk about making a difference in the workplace. And I have invited Nurse Ethna to be with us because 
she's someone who decided to reach over the wall and make a difference in the world. Now, what we discussed in our previously recorded episode that you can see online is that you might be someone who's on this side of a wall. You know that on the other side is the big world. And you feel there's something in your heart that makes you want to reach over that wall and see what it is, or at least climb up and peek over and see if there's some way that you can enter into that and make a difference. Now, we know that not everybody can do something splendid, perhaps as wonderful as what I think Nurse Ethna has done. But we believe that everyone can make a difference. We believe that God can make a difference in your heart. That difference in your heart can make a difference with the people around you, in your family and your friends, and that somehow, maybe in a little way, but somehow you can make a difference in the world. And please believe that about yourself. You are not a mistake. Your life is not wasted. And we're hoping that tonight, by hearing Nurse Ethna's story, you will be inspired a little bit. And maybe you will go back and watch our recorded episode and see how Randa and I decided to try to make a difference in the world. So, Nurse Ethna, tonight I would like you to share some with our viewers about the difference you make. First, I'd like to remind our viewers, or actually let you know, how did I meet Nurse Ethna? I met Nurse Ethna at a conference for people who were trying to make a difference in the developing world. And since I'm a medical doctor and Ethna is a nurse, we wanted to find special ways that we could take the concepts we'd learned in medicine about health and healthy living and teach those to people so that everyone in the world would have a chance to learn why is clean water important. Why do other things matter? And Ethna and I both shared an excitement for that. So Ethna, we would like to know how did you come along your path to get from where you were in the village in Ireland to making a difference in the developing world? Well, Dr. Cynthia, that is a long story, <laughs> but let me begin. I was born and raised in Ireland, in central Ireland, in a village with a hundred people in the village. Who would have thought that tonight I would be sitting before you and speaking to you? That was never my dream, but it was God's dream. When I was seven years old, my grandfather had a wound on his leg and somebody had to take care of him. He lived about a mile away from our home where we grew up, and I would go every evening. The nurse in the village taught me how to dress his wound. And as I sat with my grandfather, he told me many, many stories about the Boer War in Africa and how it impacted his life. And I said to my grandfather, you know, thank you for sharing that with me. One day, I would love to go to Africa. Well, that dream was realized. About 11 years ago, I made my first trip to Africa. And that was just a true blessing in my life. God really helped me get across that wall. When I went to Africa, I went to Kenya and met with another nurse, Sister Frida, who was to be my mentor for the last 11 years. It was there that we envisioned something I never thought would happen, and that was to help start a school of nursing in northern Kenya to help with those who did not have an opportunity to become nurses. They were in their villages, in the jungle, and never ever dreamed that they could get across the wall. But 
God provided an opportunity for them by taking me to Africa and by assisting me and helping me get the licensure and to help start the School of Nursing. So, Anna, um, how did you even go through the process of deciding to become a nurse and to be prepared for when this calling of the Lord was on your life to go to Africa? Did you go to Africa um, or did you become a nurse thinking, I'm going to go to Africa someday? Or did you become a nurse for some other reason? I think we'd like to know that. How does God work in our lives step by step? Well, I always wanted to be a nurse, you know, taking care of my grandfather's wound. Um, I knew that he had a plan and a purpose for my life. And at that time, I decided I wanted to be a nurse. My father wanted me to be a teacher, but I always told him, no, Dad, I want to be a nurse. So. At the age of 16 years old, I graduated from high school and went to Dublin, the capital of Ireland, and started my nurse training in a little hospital in Dublin, just outside of Dublin. And it was there I received my training as a diploma nurse. Little did I know that in the years to come, I would end up in the United States and would be nursing here in the United States. Again, God had a plan. I was not a Christian at that time. I did know the Lord and I did pray. My family always prayed together. As we grew up, I, I knew that prayer was very, very important in our lives. And when I came to the United States, um, I married a, a wonderful man and had a wonderful daughter. She is now 33 years old. Somewhere along the way, things fell apart and I ended up getting a divorce. It was a very, very difficult time for me thinking that I had let my family down, that I had shamed my family, that I did something that was just not the, the usual thing for a person from Ireland who was brought up that marriage was for life. But God had a better plan. And he knew that he had a, a plan and a purpose for my life. And after my divorce, I prayed and prayed because that is what I knew what to do. And a verse came to me that is my life verse now. Could and you share that with us? That is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord in all your ways. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Could I mention here, Athena, that those who were watching our show a few nights ago may recall that we said the book of Proverbs is almost a book or a plan for what we talk about in this series about making a difference because it teaches us so much about wise life choices. Your favorite verse in Proverbs 3, these are also some of my, my favorite verses and they encourage me to keep looking at God and trusting even though the circumstances are very grim and a lot of times what happens we see turns out for the best. So we want to encourage people to read the book of Proverbs. You can read one chapter a day. There are 31 chapters in it. And you may remember that there are 30 to 31 days in most months. So if you read a chapter a day, you can get through that in a month.
And of course, on this show, we especially like Proverbs 31, which talks about all the many, many things a woman can do. And this is a passage 3,000 years old. And even 3,000 years ago, a noble woman was considered someone who made a difference in her home and outside of the home. To remember Ethna in Proverbs 31, some of the things that it talks about women doing that were um, considered honorable. I do remember, but I do not know how to quote the verse. Okay. Would you mind quoting it for me, please? Because there are several. It's a whole yes. chapter. Mm -hmm. And I am just indirectly alluding to the fact that in Proverbs it says that uh, women can work, they can buy land, they can take care of their household, many things. And I think my question was a little vague there. I didn't say specifically what I was referring to. But there's a wide assortment of what women can do. So we want you to feel, if you're a woman, don't think, oh, I'm a woman, I can't do anything, I can't learn, I can't work. No, you can do things. On the other hand, on this show, we talk about being serious about our limitations and trying to work within the expectations of others around us. And uh, if we're married, looking at what, if we're married or if we are in our, our parents' house. So I encourage you to get the basics of what we taught for how a woman can approach her desire to have a career and get those basics off of our episode on the website. So we don't want you to take anything we say today out of context and get into big trouble somehow. But we're just adding to what we shared previously. So after the, some of the things that we have done together were working in overseas situations, serving together. And our viewers may be interested that we served together in North Africa working on a, um, a seminar with health professionals and other places. Maybe you can share some of the other countries that you've worked in, Is that, um, if they're not too yes. confidential. No, they're not, Dr. Cynthia. And I have worked mostly in Central Africa, in the Congo, in Goma. Uh, it's in the... Um, western part of um, the Congo. I've also served in Burundi, Rwanda, um, Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Morocco. I've also served in India, mm -hmm. Thailand, China, and Tibet, along with serving here in the United States in many different areas. And when I think of that, I'm very pleased, very impressed that you've made a difference in these places. I'm wondering, did you come across obstacles on the way, things that could have stopped you from getting to be a nurse? What, what things might have gotten in your way? Because all of us feel like we, we face obstacles within or without. Sometimes we have trouble studying. Sometimes our family stops us. So what might you have faced in the way of obstacles? Well, the major obstacle, Dr. Cynthia, and our listeners and viewers, is, was my father. He did not want me to become a nurse. He wanted me to be a teacher. But today, I'm both a nurse and a teacher. So. I fulfilled my father's wishes. Um, he was totally against me becoming a nurse. He did not want me to do that. He said it was beneath me to do that. He wanted me to be a teacher to stay home in our home village and teach the people there. But that was not God's plan. Wow. He wanted you inside the wall just in this village of 100 people. Yes, he did. He didn't want you living in America, going to Afra, going Africa, going to Asia, going to all of these places to start nursing schools and teach health. No, he did not. He wanted to protect me and keep me, as Dr. Cynthia said, inside that wall. And 
if I had done that, I feel that I would not be fulfilling my purpose in life today. I would not be um, functioning as a nurse. I probably would be at home and settle down with um, someone at home in Ireland and in a little village probably on a farm and more than likely would have had to give up my career as a teacher if I had stayed home to take care of the children. Which is very nice and we're not speaking against it. It's just that it's encouraging to us to know that although you were in a small town and no one encouraged you, you still can get out and make a difference in the world because you had that vision and you had that, that purpose. And we talked the other night, Ethna, about purpose and, and what you felt your purpose was in life. And I said, oh, that's like we share with our viewers, like was in our previous series and we talked about live the other night about peace and purpose in life and how we believe that we can all have peace, peace with God, peace in our hearts, peace with each other, and that we have a purpose. And each person has a purpose and they can make a difference. How did you come to find that you had a purpose? Was that when you got to know the Lord or how did this occur to you in life? It happened when I joined my church on a mission trip. My first mission trip was to Kiev, Ukraine. That changed my entire life. Um, I was challenged when I got to Kiev, first with the language. I did not speak the language. Secondly, I did not know what it was like to be a Christian. I was just learning about my Christian walk. I was baptized there. And my role was to work in a hospital at taking care of children that had cancers or were going through chemotherapy because of the problems from Chernobyl. And that really enlightened me. Can you remind our viewers just briefly what happened at Chernobyl? In Chernobyl, the nuclear reactor failed and there was leakage from the nuclear reactor uh, with radiation that went all over Ukraine and it caused many, many different leukemias and cancers, especially in mothers uh, that were pregnant or in children. And it was devastating for the entire land. Now I want to open up our show to calls. If any of you feel like you have a question about how you might reach over the wall in your life, if you have a question for Nurse Ethna or I, feel free to call. And while you're thinking about that, I want to share something that happened in my life in the last few years since we filmed the series, the first season of Woman Who Makes a Difference, and maybe you can comment on this, Ethna. But I think it might be helpful to some of you because I've had a chance to see the work-life situation from a variety of sides. As you might imagine, going to medical school, being a doctor, always I had to get good grades. And then I became a leader in many ways. I became the director of a large laboratory, actually more than one large laboratory. I made the rules. I was the boss. I knew pretty much everything that was going on. And I was sharp and fast. And I believed those verses in the Bible that say, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for people. And do this to bring glory to God. Whatever you do, bring glory to God. So in my mind, I was thinking, OK, do your best and excel, and you will bring glory to God. Well, what's happened in my life the last few years, Ethna, and you might be able to relate to this. I think some of our viewers can, is as I started doing other things, started doing more work in developing nations, working in ministry, and uh, working some spe with some special needs in my own family, I had to work less and less at the hospital. 
And what I say is I went from being a leader to being a learner. Now, I knew how to go the other way. I knew how to go from being a learner to a leader. That's what I had done, study, 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 from the time I was a small child, through high school, through university, through medical school, through specialty training. I did 13 years of, of training after high school. This is a lot of training. So I knew how to learn, and I knew how to lead through various organizations and through work. But I wasn't really expecting to become a learner again. But what happens is, now that I'm less at the hospital, they're changing things all the time. In America and medicine, you know we're in a time of great change. And in my specialty, things keep getting more complicated, and we have more and more ways to look at things. So I am back to trying to catch up and think, OK, since the last time I was here, what's new? What are they doing now? And I, I find that gives me a sympathy with people who are now not the leader. And I have some family members who are not really in leadership positions, are not going to university. They, you know, they're more average or maybe less than average. And I want to encourage people out there not to think that if you are average or below average, you can't glorify God in your life, that you have to be some super person. Some nurse opening nursing schools in remote corners of Africa, or a doctor leading a laboratory. No, I, I really believe now it's not about that. I think it's about doing your best and having the best attitude you can. And even when you're not the leader or the shining star of the group, you can still bring glory to God by your attitude and your willingness and your um, cheerful disposition let me ask Nurse Ethna. Ethna, do you have any comments on that, how you can shine when you're not the brightest or you're not the leader? Yes, I can. Because one of the obstacles in my life was that I was always a C average student. I never excelled when I was in school. Just three years ago, I went back to school again and received my Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And this was to bring glory to God again with my work in Africa. They had made me Dean of the School of Nursing. A C average student that always had to study so hard is now, when I was taking my Bachelor's, an A student. Wow. And I am now an administrative <laughs> supervisor in a large trauma hospital here in Southern California. For somebody that did not do well in school back home in Ireland, now I'm excelling because God came into my life. That was my purpose in life. And he made it happen. And I would never guess that, Ethna. I've so enjoyed our discussion here today because I've learned things about you I didn't know in spite of all the years that we've worked together. I never would have guessed that you were a C student because you are so good in teaching and I've enjoyed working with you in seminars and things. And, and I hope that encourages our listeners too. One of the things I learned going through the medical school process is it's not so much a matter of being a genius. To be a medical doctor, you don't have to be an Einstein, a genius, the smartest person in the world. You need to have, I think, above average intelligence. Yes, you need to be a, a, a little bit intelligent. But the most important thing is what you are explaining to us is working on it. It's being faithful. It's working hard. It's being consistent. And I suggest that to any of you that maybe would like to do something, but you think, gee, my grades aren't that good. Well, you have an advantage over someone else if you work harder and you're more faithful. Even if that person is smarter, do you remember the story about the turtle and the rabbit? Yes. And the rabbit could run fast, but he was lazy. So the turtle just kept going and going and going, and the turtle won. And that's what we would like to encourage you in today, that by your faithfulness, by looking for what God would have you do and listening to his voice, 
you can reach over the wall and make a difference in the world and have your life be a life with a purpose. Thank you for joining us here today on Woman Who Makes a Difference.